Are you a fan of the undead and love a good scare? Welcome to our countdown of the top 50 zombie movies that will keep you on the edge of your seat. From cult classics to modern thrillers, we felt the best of the best lined up for you. Get ready to dive into a world of horror, action and spine-chilling fun. Number 1. Dawn of the Dead 2004 The 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead, directed by Zack Snyder in his directorial debut, is a reimagining of George A. Romero's 1978 classic. This modern horror film follows a group of survivors who take refuge in a suburban shopping mall amid a sudden zombie apocalypse. With fast-paced action and visceral special effects, the movie delivers intense suspense and graphic horror, differentiating itself from the original slow-moving zombies and social commentary. The ensemble cast, including Sarah Polly, Ving Rhames, and Jake Weber, brings a compelling human element to the chaotic scenario. Snyder's film is noted for its adrenaline-fueled sequences, particularly the thrilling opening scene and its effective use of practical and digital effects. Dawn of the Dead 2004 is both homage to Romero's seminal work and a fresh, exciting entry in the zombie genre, resonating with contemporary audiences and solidifying Snyder's career in Hollywood. Number 2 to 28 Days Later 2002 released in 2002 and directed by Danny Boyle, revitalized the zombie genre with its unique take on the apocalypse. Unlike traditional zombies, the films infected are victims of a rage-inducing virus creating fast-paced and relentless antagonists. Set in a post-apocalyptic Britain, the story follows Jim, played by Cillian Murphy, as he awakens from a coma to discover a desolate world overrun by these enraged beings. Boyle's direction emphasizes gritty realism and intense atmosphere, using digital video to capture a sense of urgency and immediacy. The film explores themes of survival, isolation, and humanity's capacity for both cruelty and compassion. With its haunting score by John Murphy and memorable scenes of urban decay juxtaposed with moments of eerie tranquility, 28 Days Later remains a landmark in horror cinema, influencing subsequent films and establishing a new benchmark for the zombie genre in the 21st century. Number 3. Night of the Living Dead 1968 Directed by George A. Romero and released in 1968, pioneered the modern zombie genre and became a cult classic. Shot on a modest budget, the film follows a group of people trapped in a farmhouse besieged by reanimated corpses. Romero's black and white cinematography and stark realism heightened the horror, while the film's social commentary on race and society added depth. The protagonist, Ben, played by Duane Jones, challenged racial stereotypes of the time, making the film groundbreaking in its portrayal of a black lead in a horror movie. Night of the Living Dead set new standards for horror filmmaking with its chilling atmosphere, gruesome makeup effects, and provocative themes influencing generations of filmmakers and solidifying Romero's legacy as a master of horror. Number 4. Train to Busan 2016, released in 2016 and directed by Yan Sang Ho, is a South Korean zombie apocalypse thriller that captivated global audiences with its intense action and emotional depth. The film unfolds primarily on a speeding train as a sudden viral outbreak turns passengers into ravenous zombies. The narrative focuses on Sik Wu, played by Gong Yu, a workaholic father, and his daughter Su An, played by Kim Su An, whose journey to Busan becomes a desperate struggle for survival. Yun Sang Ho blends heart pounding suspense with poignant moments of human vulnerability, exploring themes of sacrifice, redemption, and the resilience of familial bonds amidst chaos. Train to Busan is praised for its dynamic cinematography, tight pacing, and well-developed characters, making it a standard entry in the zombie genre that resonates beyond its thrilling premise. Number 5. Dawn of the Dead 1978, directed by George A. Romero and released in 1978, is a seminal film in the zombie genre. Set during a zombie apocalypse, it follows a group of survivors who seek refuge in a shopping mall, exploring themes of consumerism and societal decay. Romero's use of slow-moving zombies and social commentary distinguished the film, while its practical effects and eerie atmosphere set a standard for horror. Dawn of the Dead remains a cult classic celebrated for its innovative approach to horror and its lasting influence on zombie lore in popular culture. Number 6. Zombieland 2009 directed by Ruben Fleischer and released in 2009 is a horror comedy that brings a fresh, humorous twist to the zombie apocalypse. 
The film stars Jesse Eisenberg as Columbus, a neurotic college student navigating a world overrun by zombies. He joins forces with the tough and sardonic Tallahassee, Woody Harrelson, the cunning Wichita, Emma Stone, and her sister Little Rock, Abigail Breslin. Together they journey across the desolate United States, adhering to Columbus's set of survival rules, which adds a unique comedic element. Zombieland is celebrated for its sharp wit, inventive zombie kills, and the chemistry among its leads. The film's blend of horror, humor, and heartfelt moments, along with a memorable cameo by Bill Murray, has made it a standard and beloved entry in the zombie genre. Number 7 to 28 Weeks Later 2007 released in 2007 and directed by Juan Carlos Fresnado, is the intense sequel to the groundbreaking 28 Days Later. Set six months after the original outbreak, the film follows the efforts to repopulate and restore order in a quarantine London, now declared free of infection. The story centers on Don, Robert Carlyle, whose actions inadvertently reintroduced the rage virus, leading to another catastrophic outbreak. The film explores themes of guilt, survival, and the fragility of hope in the face of relentless terror. Known for its gripping suspense, relentless pacing, and visceral horror, 28 Weeks Later builds on the atmospheric dread of its predecessor while delivering thrilling action and emotional depth. Its chilling depiction of societal collapse and moral dilemmas adds a compelling layer to the zombie genre. Number 8. The Evil Dead 1981, directed by Sam Raimi and released in 1981, is a seminal horror film that has become a cult classic. The movie follows five college students who unwittingly unleash malevolent spirits while vacationing in a remote cabin. As the supernatural forces possess each of them, the lone survivor, Ash Williams, played by Bruce Campbell, must battle the relentless evil. Raimi's innovative direction, featuring dynamic camera work and practical effects, creates a visceral and terrifying experience. The film's low budget adds to its gritty charm, making its gruesome scenes even more impactful. The Evil Dead is celebrated for its blend of horror, dark humor, and inventive filmmaking, solidifying its status as a landmark in the horror genre and launching a beloved franchise that continues to influence modern horror cinema. Number 9, World War Z 2013, released in 2013 and directed by Mark Forster, is an action-packed zombie thriller based on Max Brooks' novel of the same name. The film stars Brad Pitt as Jerry Lane, a former United Nations investigator who races against time to stop a global zombie pandemic. Unlike typical slow-moving zombies, the infected in World War Z are fast and aggressive, creating intense and chaotic scenes. The movie takes audiences on a globe-trotting journey, showcasing the widespread devastation and the desperate search for a solution. Known for its large-scale action sequences and impressive visual effects, World War Z offers a fresh and exhilarating take on the zombie apocalypse. Despite deviations from the source material, the film was a commercial success and remains a notable entry in the genre. Number 10. The Return of the Living Dead 1985 directed by Dan O'Bannon and released in 1985 is a horror comedy that cleverly satirizes the zombie genre. The film follows two warehouse workers who accidentally release a toxic gas that reanimates the dead, causing chaos in a nearby town. Unlike traditional zombies, these undead crave brains specifically and retain some cognitive functions. The film is renowned for its blend of humor, gore and punk rock aesthetic, featuring a memorable soundtrack and quirky characters. Its self-aware script and over-the-top special effects contribute to its cult status. The Return of the Living Dead stands out for its innovative approach to the genre, mixing genuine scares with dark comedy, and has influenced numerous zombie films and pop culture references since its release. Number 11. The Crazies 2010, directed by Breck Eisner and released in 2010, is a tense horror thriller remake of George A. Romero's 1973 film. Set in the small town of Ogden Marsh, Iowa, the story follows Sheriff David Dutton, Timothy Oliphant, and his wife Judy Radha Mitchell as they face a terrifying outbreak. A contaminated water supply turns the townspeople into violent, mindless killers, dubbed crazies. The film builds suspense through its chilling atmosphere, unpredictable plot twists, and intense action sequences. It explores themes of paranoia, survival, and the breakdown of societal order. With strong performances, particularly from Oliphant and Mitchell, 
and effective direction. The Crazies offers a gripping and unnerving experience, distinguishing itself within the horror genre as a compelling and well-executed remake. Number 12. Day of the Dead 1985 Directed by George A. Romero and released in 1985, is the third installment in Romero's iconic zombie series. Set in an underground bunker where a small group of scientists and military personnel seek refuge, the film explores the psychological and social breakdown of its characters amidst the apocalypse. The plot revolves around Dr. Sarah Bauman, Laurie Cardill, and her colleagues' attempts to understand and potentially control the zombie outbreak. Known for its gruesome special effects by Tom Savini and its darker, more claustrophobic atmosphere, Day of the Dead delves deeply into themes of humanity, fear and the potential for cooperation versus conflict. Although initially less commercially successful than its predecessors, the film has since gained recognition as a thought-provoking and influential piece in the zombie genre. Number 13. Evil Dead Eye, 1987, directed by Sam Raimi and released in 1987, is a horror comedy classic that brilliantly blends terrifying gore with slapstick humor. A sequel and partial remake of Raimi's original The Evil Dead, the film follows Ash Williams' Bruce Campbell as he battles demonic forces in a remote cabin. After accidentally releasing evil spirits from the Necronomicon, Ash faces relentless supernatural horrors and his own descent into madness. Raimi's inventive direction, including dynamic camera work and practical effects, combined with Campbell's charismatic and over-the-top performance, create a unique and entertaining experience. Evil Dead Eye is celebrated for its outrageous set pieces, dark humor, and imaginative gore, solidifying its status as a cult favorite and a pivotal film in both the horror and comedy genres. Number 14, I Am Legend 2007, directed by Francis Lawrence and released in 2007, is a post-apocalyptic thriller based on Richard Matheson's novel. The film stars Will Smith as Dr. Robert Neville, a scientist who is seemingly the last human survivor in a New York City devastated by a virus that turns people into nocturnal, vampiric mutants. Neville spends his days searching for a cure while battling isolation and despair. His only companion is his loyal dog, Sam. The film is noted for Smith's compelling performance, the eerie depiction of an abandoned New York, and its intense action sequences. While it deviates from the novel, I Am Legend explores themes of survival, loneliness, and hope, making it a thought-provoking and emotionally resonant entry in the genre. Number 15, Resident Evil 2002, directed by Paul Douglas Anderson and released in 2002, is a sci-fi horror film inspired by the popular video game series. The movie follows Alice Milajovic, who wakes up with amnesia in a deserted mansion. She soon joins a team of commanders to infiltrate the underground Umbrella Corporation facility, The Hive, where a viral outbreak has turned the staff into ravenous zombies. As they venture deeper, they face increasingly deadly threats including mutated creatures and the sinister artificial intelligence, the Red Queen. Known for its stylish action sequences and eerie atmosphere, Resident Evil blends horror and science fiction elements. The film's success brought a long-running franchise, solidifying its place in pop culture and making Alice a notable action heroine in modern cinema. Number 16. Zombieland Double Tap 2019, released in 2019 and directed by Ruben Fleischer, is the long-awaited sequel to the 2009 hit Zombieland. The film reunites original stars Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, and Abigail Breslin as they navigate a post-apocalyptic America overrun by zombies. Set several years after the first film, the group settles into a makeshift family dynamic while searching for a new place to call home. Their journey leads them to encounter evolved zombies and eccentric survivors including a doppelganger of Tallahassee, Harrelson, named Albuquerque Luke Wilson, and a ditzy doppelganger of Columbus, Eisenberg, named Flagstaff, Thomas Middleditch. Zombieland, Double Tap, maintains the humor, irreverence, and inventive zombie kills of its predecessor while exploring themes of friendship, resilience, and adapting to change in a world dominated by the undead. Number 17. Army of Darkness 1992, directed by Sam Raimi and released in 1992, is the third installment in the Evil Dead series, blending horror with slapstick comedy and fantasy elements. The film follows Ash Williams, Bruce Campbell, who is transported to the medieval era after being sucked into a time vortex at the end of Evil Dead Poe. 
Mistaken for a hero prophecy to save a kingdom from the Deadites, Ash must retrieve the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, to return to his own time. Raimi's direction infuses the film with a unique blend of horror and humor, incorporating creative special effects and Campbell's charismatic performance. Army of Darkness is celebrated for its quotable lines, over-the-top action sequences and Campbell's iconic portrayal of Ash, cementing its status as a cult classic and a beloved entry in the horror comedy genre. Number 18. REC 2007, directed by Jim Barguero and Paco Plaza, is a Spanish found footage horror film released in 2007. The movie follows a television reporter and a cameraman who accompany firefighters to a Barcelona apartment building in response to an emergency call. Inside, they find residents behaving violently and discover that a mysterious virus is turning people into savage creatures. As chaos ensues and the building is quarantined, they must fight for survival while documenting the horrors they encounter. Known for its intense atmosphere, claustrophobic setting and realistic portrayal of fear, REC builds tension through its handheld camera work and unsettling sound design. The film received critical acclaim for its innovative approach to the farm footage genre, effective scares and strong performances, spawning several sequels and an American remake, Quarantine. REC remains a standout in horror cinema for its visceral impact and relentless suspense. Number 19. The Cabin in the Woods 2011, released in 2011 and directed by Drew Goddard, is a horror comedy that deconstructs and subverts traditional horror tropes. The film follows a group of college friends who retreat to a remote cabin for a getaway weekend only to encounter sinister forces manipulating their every move. As they uncover dark secrets about their surroundings, the movie twists into a meta-narrative that challenges and satirizes horror genre conventions. Goddard and co-writer Joss Whedon blend humor, suspense, and clever commentary on horror cliches, creating a film that keeps audiences guessing while delivering thrilling and unexpected twists. The Cabin in the Woods is celebrated for its inventive storytelling, sharp wit, and imaginative take on horror, making it a refreshing and thought-provoking addition to the genre that has garnered a cult following since its release. Number 20, Alive 2020, released in 2020 and directed by Il Cho, is a South Korean zombie thriller that follows Oh Jim Woo, played by Yu Ahn, a young gamer who finds himself trapped alone in his apartment during a sudden zombie outbreak. As he struggles to survive and maintain his sanity, Jun Wu connects with another survivor, Yu Bin, played by Park Shin Hai, via Walkie Talkie. The two form a tense and emotional bond as they navigate the horrors outside and try to find a way to escape. Alive is praised for its intense atmosphere, gripping suspense, and strong performances, particularly from Yu An and Park Shin Hai. The film effectively portrays isolation and fear, exploring themes of resilience, loneliness, and human connection in the face of overwhelming adversity, making it a standard entry in the zombie genre. Number 21, Army of the Dead 2021 released in 2021 and directed by Zack Snyder, is a heist action horror film set in a post-apocalyptic Las Vegas overrun by zombies. The story follows a group of mercenaries led by Scott Ward, played by Dave Bautista, who are hired to infiltrate a zombie-infested quarantine zone and retrieve a substantial sum of money from a casino vault before a nuclear strike wipes out the city. The film blends intense action with Snyder's signature visual style, featuring elaborate set pieces and a diverse cast of characters. Army of the Dead explores themes of survival, greed, and redemption against the backdrop of a zombie apocalypse. It received attention for its ambitious scope, impressive visual effects, and efforts to inject new ideas into the zombie genre, appealing to both horror and action fans alike. Number 22, Quarantine 2008 released in 2008 and directed by John Eric Dowdle, is an American found footage horror film based on the Spanish film REC. The story follows television reporter Angela Vidal, played by Jennifer Carpenter, and the cameraman as they follow a routine night shift with firefighters in Los Angeles. Responding to a distress call from an apartment building, they find themselves trapped inside with residents exhibiting violent behavior due to a mysterious virus. As the situation escalates and the building is quarantined by authorities, Angela and the survivors must navigate the chaos and uncover the horrifying truth behind the outbreak. 
Known for its intense atmosphere, claustrophobic setting, and realistic portrayal of fear, Quarantine builds tension through its handheld camerawork and relentless pace, delivering effective scares and a chilling depiction of a deadly epidemic. Number 23 Pet Cemetery 1989, released in 1989 and directed by Mary Lambert, is a horror film adaptation of Stephen King's novel of the same name. The story revolves around the Creed family Lewis, Dale Midkiff, Rachel, Denise Crosby, and their children moving to a rural main town where they discover a burial ground behind their new home with the ability to bring the dead back to life. When tragedy strikes, Lewis defies natural law by burying his son in the cursed ground setting off a series of horrifying events. Lambert's direction emphasizes atmosphere and dread, while King's screenplay stays faithful to the novel's themes of grief, loss, and the consequences of tampering with death. Pet Cemetery is remembered for its chilling atmosphere, memorable performances, and disturbing exploration of the darkness within human nature, becoming a classic in horror cinema. Number 24, Cargo 2017, released in 2017 and directed by Ben Howling and Yolanda Rank, is an Australian post-apocalyptic thriller that expands on their 2013 short film of the same name. The story follows a father, Andy, played by Martin Freeman, who navigates the Australian outback with his infant daughter after a viral pandemic turns most of the population into violent zombies. Andy races against time to find a safe haven for his child before he succumbs to the infection himself. The film explores themes of parenthood, survival, and humanity's resilience in the face of a global catastrophe. Cargo stands out for its emotional depth, character-driven narrative, and the poignant portrayal of a father's unconditional love amidst overwhelming despair. It received praise for Freeman's compelling performance and its fresh take on the zombie genre, offering a thought-provoking and haunting viewing experience. Number 25, Land of the Dead 2005, directed by George A. Romero and released in 2005, is the fourth installment in Romero's iconic Dead series. Set in a post-apocalyptic world where zombies have overrun civilization, the film takes place in a fortified city where the wealthy live in luxury while the poor struggle in squalor. The narrative follows a group of mercenaries led by Riley, played by Simon Baker, and Cholo, played by John Leguizamo, who venture outside the city's walls to scavenge for supplies and encounter smarter, evolving zombies. Romero's film critiques societal divides and human exploitation while continuing his exploration of human nature in extreme circumstances. Known for its social commentary, practical effects, and intense action sequences, Land of the Dead is regarded as a relevant and thought-provoking entry in the zombie genre, expanding on Romero's established legacy. Number 26, Resident Evil, Apocalypse 2004 released in 2004, and directed by Alexander Witt, is the second installment in the Resident Evil film series based on the popular video games. The story continues the adventures of Alice, played by Mila Jovovic, who navigates through Raccoon City after the outbreak of the T-Virus, which turns people into zombies. Alongside other survivors including Jill Valentine, Selena Guillory, and Carlos Oliveira, Odid Fair, Alice fights to escape the city before it's destroyed by a nuclear strike. The film expands on the action-packed style of its predecessor, blending horror and science fiction elements with intense fight scenes and visual effects. Resident Evil, Apocalypse received attention for its faithful adaptation of the game's characters and settings, maintaining a dark and atmospheric tone while delivering thrilling entertainment to fans of the franchise and action horror enthusiasts alike. Number 27, Zombie 1979, also known as Zombie 2, or Zombie Flesh Eaters, is a 1979 Italian horror film directed by Lucio Fulci. The film follows a group of people on a remote Caribbean island who are confronted by a zombie outbreak caused by a voodoo curse. Investigating the disappearance of the island's residents, they uncover a terrifying truth about the undead rising from their graves. Fulci's film is notorious for its graphic violence, eerie atmosphere, and elaborate makeup effects by Janeta De Rossi. Zombie is remembered for its shocking scenes, including an iconic underwater zombie battle with a shark. It became a cult classic in the horror genre, praised for its effective scares and contributions to zombie lore. Fulci's direction and the film's relentless tension have solidified zombie as a significant and influential entry in the zombie subgenre of horror cinema. Number 28, 
The Girl with All the Gifts 2016, released in 2016 and directed by Colm McCarthy, is a British post-apocalyptic thriller based on the novel by M. R. Carey. The story is set in a dystopian future where a fungal infection has turned most of humanity into zombie-like creatures known as Hungries. In a military base, a group of children, including Melanie, played by Senia Nanua, who shows signs of retaining her humanity despite being infected, are studied by scientists. When the base is overrun, Melanie and a few survivors embark on a journey to find safety and possibly a cure. The film explores themes of survival, identity and ethics in a world teetering on the brink of extinction. Praise for its compelling performances, especially from Nanua, and its fresh take on the zombie genre, The Girl with All the Gifts offers a thought-provoking and emotionally resonant narrative. Number 29. The Omega Man 1971 released in 1971 and directed by Boris Sagal, is a science fiction film based on Richard Matheson's novel I Am Legend. Starring Charlton Heston as Robert Neville, the film is set in a post-apocalyptic Los Angeles where a biological war has wiped out most of humanity, turning some survivors into albino mutants known as The Family. Neville, a military scientist, believes he is the last uninfected human and spends his days hunting and fighting the mutants while searching for a cure. The film explores themes of isolation, survival and the ethics of scientific experimentation amidst societal collapse. Known for Heston's intense performance and its depiction of a desolate urban landscape, The Omega Man is a notable entry in the dystopian science fiction genre, influencing subsequent films and adaptations of Matheson's novel. Number 30, Resident Evil, Extinction 2007 released in 2007 and directed by Russell Mulcahy, is the third installment in the Resident Evil film series based on the video games. The story follows Alice, played by Mila Jovovic, and a group of survivors as they navigate a post-apocalyptic world ravaged by the T-Virus which has turned most of humanity into zombies. Seeking sanctuary in Alaska, they encounter new threats including mutated creatures and Umbrella Corporation's relentless pursuit. The film blends horror, action and science fiction elements, expanding on the franchise's mythology while delivering intense action sequences and visual effects. Resident Evil Extinction received praise for its exhilarating set pieces and Jovovic's charismatic performance, maintaining the series' reputation for thrilling entertainment. It continues to appeal to fans of the games and action horror enthusiasts for its immersive world-building and high-octane storytelling. Number 31. Warm Bodies 2013, released in 2013 and directed by Jonathan Levine, is a romantic zombie comedy drama based on Isaac Marion's novel of the same name. The film follows R, played by Nicholas Holt, a young zombie who becomes increasingly human-like after encountering Julie, played by Teresa Palmer, a living human survivor. As their unlikely relationship blossoms, R begins to regain his emotions and memories, sparking hope for a cure to the zombie plague. Warm Bodies cleverly blends humor, romance, and horror elements, offering a fresh perspective on the zombie genre by focusing on themes of redemption, love and the transformative power of human connection. The film received praise for its inventive premise, charming performances, and its ability to inject warmth and humor into a typically bleak genre, making it a standard entry in the realm of romantic comedies and zombie films alike. Number 32, Reanimator 1985. Directed by Stuart Gordon and released in 1985, is a cult classic horror comedy based on H.P. Lovecraft's serialized story, Herbert West Reanimator. The film follows Herbert West, played by Jeffrey Combs, a brilliant but eccentric medical student who develops a serum capable of reanimating the dead. As West's experiments spiral out of control, chaos ensues with grotesque and comedic consequences. The film is known for its dark humor, over-the-top gore, and imaginative practical effects, which became hallmarks of Gordon's work. Reanimator achieved cult status for its blend of horror and comedy, along with Com's memorable portrayal of the obsessive and morally dubious West. It remains a beloved and influential entry in the horror genre, inspiring sequels, adaptations, and a dedicated following among fans of inventive and outrageous horror cinema. Number 33, Resident Evil. Afterlife 2010, released in 2010 and directed by Paul Dedes Anderson, is the fourth installment in the Resident Evil film series based on the popular video games. The story continues the adventures of Alice, played by Mila Jovovic, 
Ashi searches for survivors in a world overrun by zombies and other mutated creatures unleashed by the Umbrella Corporation's T-Virus. The film introduces new characters and locations, including a post-apocalyptic Los Angeles prison, where Alice seeks refuge and battles against the corporation's latest experiments. Known for its stylized action sequences, impressive visual effects, and 3D cinematography, Resident Evil Afterlife delivers high-octane thrills and expands on the franchise's mythology. It remains a favorite among fans of the games and action horror enthusiasts for its intense pacing and Jovovic's charismatic performance as the resilient and resourceful Alice. Number 34, Night of the Comet, 1984 released in 1984 and directed by Tom Eberhardt, is a unique blend of horror, comedy and science fiction set against the backdrop of a comet passing close to Earth. The comet's tail vaporizes most of humanity and turns others into zombies or dust, leaving only a handful of survivors. Among them are sisters Regina, Catherine, Mary Stewart, and Samantha, Kelly Maroney, who navigate the deserted streets of Los Angeles, encountering both dangers and eccentric survivors. The film satirizes 1980s consumer culture and teenage angst while delivering witty dialogue and memorable characters. Nice of the Comet is praised for its strong female leads, humor and inventive take on the post-apocalyptic genre. It remains a cult classic, celebrated for its nostalgic charm and unique blend of horror and humor that continues to resonate with audiences. Number 35, Resident Evil, Retribution 2012, released in 2012 and directed by Paul Devers Anderson, is the fifth installment in the Resident Evil film series, based on the video games. The story picks up where Resident Evil Afterlife left off with Alice, played by Mila Jovovic, continuing her battle against the Umbrella Corporation, a world overrun by zombies and bioengineered monsters. The film explores new environments and scenarios, including simulated environments designed to test Alice's abilities and memories. As she reunites with old allies and confronts familiar enemies, Alice uncovers shocking truths about her past and the true nature of the Umbrella Corporation's experiments. Known for its action-packed sequences, visual effects, and Anderson's stylized direction, Resident Evil Retribution continues to deliver thrills and expand on the franchise's mythology, appealing to fans of the games and action horror enthusiasts alike. Number 36, Dead Alive 1992, also known as Brain Dead, is a 1992 horror comedy film directed by Peter Jackson. The story follows Lionel Cosgrove, played by Timothy Baum, a young man who must deal with his overbearing mother's controlling nature. When she is bitten by a Sumatran rat monkey, she turns into a ravenous zombie, sparking a chain of events that unleashes a zombie outbreak in their New Zealand town. As the infection spreads, Lionel must fight to protect himself and his love interest from the growing horde of undead, leading to outrageously gory and comedic confrontations. Known for its excessive violence, inventive practical effects, and dark humor, Dead Alive has gained a cult following for its over-the-top scenes and Jackson's early mastery of blending horror with comedic elements. It remains a celebrated entry in the zombie comedy subgenre, showcasing Jackson's distinctive directorial style. Number 37, Planet Terror 2007 released in 2007 and directed by Robert Rodriguez, is a horror action film that pays homage to exploitation cinema and B-movies of the 1970s and 1980s. Part of the Grindhouse double feature with Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof, the film follows a group of survivors in a small Texas town who battle against a biochemical outbreak that turns people into flesh-eating zombies. Led by Cherry Darling, played by Rose McGowan, a go-go dancer with a machine gun leg, the eclectic group must fight to survive and uncover the source of the infection. Planet Terror embraces its Grindhouse roots with gritty visuals, over-the-top violence, and a retro soundtrack. The film is known for its fast-paced action, absurd humor, and Rodriguez's signature style, making it a cult favorite among fans of both horror and exploitation cinema. Number 38, REC 2 2009 released in 2009 and directed by Jim Balaguerro and Paco Plaza, is a Spanish farm footage horror sequel to the acclaimed film REC. Continuing immediately after the events of the first film, a SWAT team is sent into the quarantine department building to retrieve a blood sample from the infected. As they navigate the dark and claustrophobic corridors, they encounter more horrors and uncover the sinister truth behind the outbreak. 
The film expands on the mythology established in REC, delving deeper into the origins of the infection and introducing new layers of suspense and terror. Known for its intense atmosphere, effective scares, and seamless integration of found footage techniques, REC 2 received praise for its relentless pace and innovative approach to the zombie genre, solidifying its status as a standout in horror cinema. Number 39. Dead Snow 2009 released in 2009 and directed by Tommy Wokoda is a Norwegian horror comedy that combines elements of zombie and Nazi exploitation genres. The film follows a group of friends on a ski vacation in the Norwegian mountains where they encounter undead Nazi soldiers who rise from their graves seeking revenge. As the friends fight for survival against the relentless and bloodthirsty zombies, the movie blends humor with intense gore and action sequences. Dead Snow is known for its inventive premise, over-the-top violence, and tongue-in-cheek humor, which playfully subverts genre conventions while delivering thrilling scares. The film gained a cult following for its creative approach to the zombie genre and Wakoda's energetic direction, establishing it as a notable entry in both horror and comedy horror cinema. Number 40. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island 1998 release Number 41. Phantasm 1979 released in 1979 and directed by Don Coscarelli, is a cult horror film known for its surreal and imaginative storytelling. The movie follows teenager Mike, played by Michael Baldwin, who, along with his older brother Jody, Bill Thornbury, and their friend Reggie, Reggie Bannister, investigates strange occurrences at a local cemetery. They discover that the enigmatic tall man, Angus Scrim, is responsible for mysterious deaths and supernatural phenomena involving killer spheres and otherworldly dimensions. Phantasm bends horror with science fiction and fantasy elements, creating an eerie and unsettling atmosphere throughout. The film is noted for its innovative practical effects, haunting score and surreal narrative that challenges conventional horror tropes. Phantasm spawned a franchise with several sequels, establishing it as a seminal work in independent horror cinema and a favorite among fans of cult classics and supernatural thrillers. Number 42, Slither 2006, released in 2006 and directed by James Gunn, is a horror comedy film that pays homage to classic B-movies and creature features. The story unfolds in a small town where a parasitic alien organism crash lands and infects local resident Grant Grant, played by Michael Rooker. As Grant transforms into a grotesque monster, he begins to infect others, causing chaos and gruesome mutations. The film blends humor with visceral horror and features a quirky ensemble cast including Nathan Fillion and Elizabeth Banks. Slither received praise for its inventive creature design, dark humor, and Gunn's sharp direction, establishing it as a cult favorite among fans of both horror and comedy genres. Number 43, Day of the Dead 1985, released in 1985 and directed by George A. Romero, is the third installment in Romero's iconic Dead series. Set in a post-apocalyptic world where zombies outnumber humans, the film follows a group of scientists and military personnel holed up in an underground bunker. Tensions rise as they struggle to find a solution to the zombie epidemic while facing internal conflicts. Known for its social commentary, practical effects, and exploration of human nature under extreme stress, Day of the Dead is revered by fans of the genre for its bleak atmosphere and uncompromising vision solidifying Romero's legacy in zombie cinema. Number 44, Night of the Creeps 1986, released in 1986 and directed by Fred Decker, is a horror comedy that pays homage to 1950s sci-fi B-movies. The film follows two college students who unwittingly unleash alien brain slugs that turn their hosts into zombies. As the campus is overrun, they team up with a tough detective to stop the spread of the creatures. Night of the Creeps blends humor with horror and features nods to classic horror tropes, making it a cult favorite among fans of both genres. Known for its witty dialogue, practical effects, and energetic direction, the film remains a beloved entry in the 1980s horror canon. Number 45, Return of the Living Dead Part A, 1988, released in 1988 and directed by Ken Wiederhorn, is a horror comedy sequel to the 1985 film Return of the Living Dead. The story revolves around a new group of characters who unwittingly release a deadly gas that reanimates the dead, causing a zombie outbreak. 
As they attempt to survive the onslaught of brain-hungry zombies, the film blends humor with horror and features over-the-top gore and practical effects. One was critically acclaimed as its predecessor, Return of the Living Dead Part i.e. retains a cult following for its campy humor, memorable zombie designs, and nostalgic appeal to fans of 1980s horror cinema. Number 46, Diary of the Dead 2007 released in 2007 and directed by George A. Romero, is a found footage horror film that serves as the fifth installment in Romero's Dead series. The film follows a group of college students who are making a horror movie when they suddenly find themselves caught in the midst of the zombie apocalypse. They document their journey and the chaos unfolding around them, exploring themes of media manipulation and the ethical dilemmas of capturing real-life horror. Diary of the Dead blends a social commentary with intense horror sequences, offering a fresh perspective on the zombie genre through its handheld camera style and Romero's signature storytelling. Number 47, Survival of the Dead 2009, released in 2009 and directed by George A. Romero, is the sixth installment in Romero's influential Dead series. The film follows a group of soldiers seeking refuge on Plum Island off the coast of Delaware, where they find two feuding families with opposing views on how to handle the undead. One family believes in killing the zombies, while the other thinks they should be kept alive in hopes of finding a cure. The film combines horror with social commentary, focusing on themes of conflict and survival. Though it received mixed reviews, it is notable for continuing Romero's legacy in the zombie genre. Number 48, Stakeland 2010, released in 2010 and directed by Jim Mickle, is a post-apocalyptic horror film set in a world ravaged by a vampire pandemic. The story follows a young boy named Martin Conopaldo who, after losing his family, teams up with a hardened vampire hunter known only as Mr. Nick Demisi. Together, they journey through the desolate landscape, seeking sanctuary while battling bloodthirsty vampires and human threats. Known for its gritty atmosphere, strong performances, and emotional depth, Stake Land offers a fresh take on the vampire genre, blending horror with a poignant survival narrative that resonates with audiences. Number 49 Cooties 2014 Released in 2014 and directed by Jonathan Mullot and Kerry Munyon, is a horror comedy film with a unique twist on the zombie genre. The story is set in an elementary school where a mysterious virus originating from contaminated chicken nuggets turns children into feral, zombie-like creatures. A group of teachers including Clint Elijah Wood, Lucy Allison Pill, and Wade Rain Wilson must band together to survive the outbreak and find a way to escape the school. Blending humor with gore, Cooties is known for its sharp wit, inventive premise, and playful critique of school life and horror tropes. The film's mix of comedy and horror, along with strong performances, makes it an entertaining and memorable addition to the genre. Number 50 Cockney's Zombies 2012, released in 2012 and directed by Matthias Hone, is a British horror comedy that pits East End Londoners against a zombie apocalypse. The film follows a group of bumbling bank robbers, led by brothers Terry, Rasmus Hardiker, and Andy, Harry Treadaway, who find themselves in the midst of a zombie outbreak while attempting a heist. As they fight to survive, they also aim to save their grandfather, Alan Ford, and his fellow residents at a retirement home besieged by the undead. Blending British humor with gory action, Cockney's Zombies offers a fun, tongue-in-cheek take on the zombie genre. It's praised for its witty dialogue, engaging characters and have a mix of horror and comedy, making it a standout in zombie cinema. Thanks for joining us on this thrilling journey through the top 50 zombie movies. We hope you found some new favorites and rediscovered some old classics. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more awesome movie content. Let us know in the comments which zombie flicks are your top picks. Until next time, stay safe and keep the horror alive.